All right, so we've talked about equivalence classes and how those produce boundary values. And there are both uh, the boundary values that are between two equivalence classes and as well as the implicit boundary values that we might find at the ends of uh, an equivalence class. So for example, like a minimum and a maximum or something that's outside the range. So those are, those are the boundary values and we focus testing around there. And we also wanna try a whole bunch of the interior values of those classes. And that's a good way to help us think about how we're going to find bugs in the code. Now, another way that's helpful for us to think about where we might have bugs and how can we come up with appropriate test cases is to think about and talk about base, edge, and corner cases, okay? And uh, pretty simply, a base clay case is when we're feeding into our system uh, input that's, that's really expected and normal, um, all right? The edge case, oh, this is really approaching sort of the limits of what we might have expected as an input. Um, and the corner case, these are crazy values. We should never, never have really seen these, these ever. Um, you know, so there's all sorts of stuff, uh, examples. Let me, let's give a, an example from a user interface. Uh, so let's say you're working, uh, you've got an e-commerce site, and so, uh, you know, we've got a user interface, e-commerce, that's some sort of, uh, you know, shopping cart system. Um, all right, so let's say we have a shopping cart. And so the user, you know, oh yeah, click to add the shopping cart, great. Um, so, Base case, you know, user adds a few items. That's what we expect. Eh, a couple items in there. No, oh, I don't know, some reasonable number into your shopping cart. Um, edge case. Ooh, you know, the user surprises us. Um, with a large order. Now, I don't know, what's a large order? Um, how, maybe a hundred things? You know, maybe, you know, maybe a hundred to a thousand things. You know, I've never bought, you know, on Amazon a hundred books at once. Maybe someone has, but I've never come close to that. Certainly, these are, these are like, you could envision as, if you were a developer and you think about your normal uh usage of systems you know you probably don't go buy hundreds of things uh usually in a you know in a sort of a regular shopping site so maybe you know that's not part of your normal design when you designed it so when you designed it you were thinking yeah people are going to buy a few items like you're oh yeah you know that's all i ever buy is you know most 10, 20 things, you know, big, big, that would be a big shopping trip for me um, for a site like Amazon. Um, but, oh, so I designed it with this in mind. Yeah, chances are I probably wasn't really thinking about this. This is kind of pushed the limits of the system um, and my thoughts. So this is more of an edge case to test out. So you could think about, yeah, we're gonna do some end-to-end uh, -end testing or some other testing of the shopping cart, and we add some items, delete some items, change the quantities, yeah, it all seems to work. Ooh, maybe we should test out sort of the edge case scenario. This is less important to test. This is critical to test, but this, this might happen. And we sure don't wanna be missing on a gigantic order from a customer. Um, just because we didn't code things to be able to handle that, that load. Now, uh, corner case, yeah, uh, you know, a whole store in the cart, you know, or millions of things. Um, geez, oh, I mean, this is crazy. So this is really testing the limits of 
of things. And maybe we just need to be able to know that uh, when this happens, all right, the system, so we don't like, what we don't want is some crazy thing that causes the whole entire site to fall apart because this has overloaded the database or something. We need uh, maybe some mechanism in place that we're, there's actually some limit that we place so that we don't cause. So maybe that's why we test the corner case to make sure that we've done something that doesn't really mess up the world. And so some, you know, this is just a shopping cart. There can be lots of things where we can think about, think about this. Um, you know, we can think about when we have a form for a new user to create an account. Well, what's, what sort of, you know, length of names? Uh, what about all those different variations on email? Did we really test? Are we really, we know what the base cases are. All oh, people with nice email addresses at Gmail edge cases, some strange, weird system that we haven't heard of, and they're using new domain names or something, you know, something strange, or uses of capitalization and other symbols that we that aren't common in emails, but might be actually legal in emails. Maybe we should test that, you know, corner cases, you know, esoteric naming rules for email that we've never seen since 1972. Um, you know, no one has an email address like that anymore, but it's still legal. Should we really, you know, are we gonna test for that and, and, and catch that? You know, there's all sorts of ways, but this is a way for you to kind of think about the, the test cases that you're gonna develop in addition to thinking about uh, equivalence classes. Um, when we come up with our test cases, we can also be thinking about often this idea of test cases that test for success and test cases that test for failure. Um, so we want to test both, uh, you know, good input. These are sort of a success scenarios. Um, and we might very well talk about this as the you know the happy path that for example a user might take you know they gave us a nice name they gave us a nice email uh, and a password and we made their account it was just all wonderful nice good input it was successful we created the account um, and we want to test bad inputs that produce a failure response you know to test proper error handling. And so, yes, they gave us a poorly formatted email address and we need to make sure that we caught that and we did not actually create their account. Um, there, there's other notions when we talk about good inputs and bad inputs. We can even think about all sorts of, you know, maybe a mathematical function is only defined for positive values and you're not allowed to send a negative value in there. Well, and so we need to check to see that the method actually raises some sort of exception when we pass in a negative value. Um, we need to test that it doesn't just take the negative value and produce an incorrect output, we need to actually make sure that it raises an error that we can then know that people will not misuse that method. So we need to, we want to test both, both the happy paths and the sad paths, okay? So good input and bad inputs and make sure that the code is designed to handle both of these. Um, I'm not going to write it on the board, but you will, you can read in the, the book that uh, there's a sort, and it's actually kind of an old old concept talking about black, white, and gray box testing. So black box testing, the idea that you test the software and you have you don't get to look at the code. White box testing, oh, you get to look at the code. So you can really kind of figure out where those bugs might be. And uh, gray box, um, you know, uh, and in fact, white box includes being able to call the code. Gray box is you can look at the code, but you cannot actually call it. Now, this terminology, we're done with it. We don't think in terms of black box and gray box and white box. Everything is white box because our testing is 
done by developers. Developers are responsible for working together as a team to make sure that they are producing the evidence that their code works. You know, so they're creating the body of tests, both manual and automated, that together when taken as a whole will give everyone confidence that there are not problems or not serious problems with the code. And so developers have access to the ability to call the code. They can see all the code. It, this whole notion of black box and gray box is gone. It's, it's all back, it's all white box now. And we're, we're, this is really important. Like we're not blind to the code that we're writing. We're actively engaging with it and looking at it and thinking, hmm, will I have done that right? And I know what I tried to do and what I wanted to do and we're gonna test for it. All right, 